Our keynote speaker today is Mr. Fred Hock. He's the CEO of the Illinois Technology Association. He currently sits on the Chicago uh, Mayor's Council of Technology Advisors, uh, the steering committee of the Technology Commerce Commercialization Task Force, easy for you to say, of the Illinois Development Council. So, Fred. Thanks, John. Good morning. good morning. There we go. That's good. Usually I say good morning, but no one's had enough coffee. So it's my pleasure to be here today, and, uh, and I'm psyched to talk to all of you because I don't get to talk to engineers enough. Um, so I'm going to talk today a little bit about Illinois. I say it's the unsung technology center. We are standing in Motorola, which is sort of the quintessential sh uh, Chicago slash Illinois technology company. But the problem we have is that everybody knows Motorola around the country, but don't know all the other great things that are happening here in Chicago and in Illinois. You can all hear me okay, right? Good. So I'm going to talk a little about what's going on today. I'm going to talk about trends that are happening in our community and what's happening and how this is good for all of you. But first I want to talk about what matters most. And what matters most in this room and actually in this industry, frankly, is you. You are engineers. We need you all the time to be working very hard doing great things. You are the lifeblood of Illinois' technology industry. You are the lifeblood of Illinois' economy in the future. Let's be clear. The success of this state is dependent on people like you to drive our business community forward, to drive innovation, to transform the industries that we have here in the state of Illinois. And I can't do enough for all of you to make you and everybody else you work with the rock stars that you are. Because the fact of the matter is we need you guys to continue to do great, great things for this community we're going to drive Illinois and be a great place for technology in the future. So who is the technology industry here in the state of Illinois? There's about 6,000 technology companies that I know about. And that's, that's just IT, electronics, communications, semiconductors. I'm not talking about um, nanotech, or for the most part, or biotech. Really sort of IT, electronics, ICT, if you will. There's 275,000 workers we know about, 16 billion in salaries. Um, we've got. Uh, large vendor and customer workforces, so a huge amount of technology companies we all know about, am I blocking you, sir? Uh, and as well as huge customers. So I don't know if you all know, anybody here work for State Farm? No. So State Farm has 10,000 IT workers in Bloomington, in <coughs> Illinois. Ungodly amount of people working in Bloomington, Illinois doing IT. Um, we'll rank top five in IT empl uh, employment. And we have huge operations of national players. So Lenovo now, obviously, with the other Motorola, Microsoft, Uber, all these things have set up large operations here in Chicago because outside of their home city, outside of their home state, Chicago is ripe with talent, it's ripe with infrastructure, it's ripe with the things they need to drive their businesses forward. And so we've become a premier destination for other national and global players around the world. So what does that all mean for you guys? Well. The fact that, well, oh, sorry. let me take a step back one second, sorry. Um, I am speaking, and when I should just begin to talk by saying, I like dialogue. So if you, have, if you don't agree with me, if you think I'm full of shit, you just raise your hand and say, Fred, you're full of shit. Uh, and let's talk about it, because I like to talk about, I like to have dialogue about what's going on. So, step, so I've talked about broadly about this, about what's going on in the technology industry. Um, but there's really three sort of classes, if you will, of technology companies in the state of Illinois. There's the large players. We are in the home of one of the largest, right, Motorola Solutions, and there's hundreds of those companies here that are producing electronics, producing communications, producing software that are transforming the industry, <coughs> are leaders in the industry, and doing great things. What Chicago, what Illinois has also is this second tier, which is very different than a lot of other places, what I call growth stage technology. These are companies that are at the low end, a couple million in revenue, to the high end, half a billion in half a billion or so in revenue. They're companies who are growing rapidly, who are scaling operations on a, uh, quickly, who are focused on how do I grow more than 20% a year. And Chicago slash Illinois has, in our estimation, the largest number of these companies. Companies that have real revenue, real employees are doing real things. We have about 1,500 to 2,000 we know about. We can't find any other place that has that many in the technology space. 
And of course, we've got the startup activity as sort of the, the, not the bottom tier, but the first tier, if you will, of, of, of what's going on. And you all hear lots of things about technology <coughs> companies. Everybody named Grubhub, Groupon, um, Cupcake Delivery Service X, right? There's lots of things going on in Chicago, lots of things going on in Illinois. Um, they get a lot of attention. But the fact of the matter is we also know that eight of 10 will fail. So while there's a lot of part of activity, there's also, we've got to get the number up to get more of the growth stage and large scale companies. But to support those, lots of incubators and accelerators happening in the state of Illinois. Have you, how many of you been downtown and see 1871 or Tech Nexus or places like that? Lots of activity happening all over the state uh, to support those companies. The three tiers of companies out there. So the question that I got asked about from a standpoint of the industry is how do we compare nationally? And who won't, if anybody in this room ever says we're the next Silicon Valley, please don't ever say it again. And the reason I say that is Silicon Valley is the Michael Jordan of technology centers. No matter how good a basketball player you are, you'll never be good enough to be Michael Jordan. So as long as we try and be Silicon Valley, as long as we compare ourselves to Silicon Valley, we will always be an inferior entity to Silicon Valley. And that's okay. What it means is we can be a great basketball player, a great technology center that's different than Silicon Valley. So Derek, we'll be the Derek Rose, if you will, assuming you can play again, who knows, we'll see. Uh, Derek Rose of basketball players, right? Um, and that's what we're trying to focus on as a community. So where do we comp compete nationally? So we all know Silicon Valley, we all think of Boston as, as robust technology centers, uh, maybe second tier Austin and, and, uh, and the Research Triangle, maybe San Diego, where I'm from. Um, and the fact is that Chicago isn't sort of usually in that argument, right? It's usually sort of those companies, and then we say, oh, Chicago, Illinois, they're sort of at the end. But the fact of the matter is, when you look at those numbers, we're really sort of a second, we're a second tier place, and that's okay. That's where we need to be going forward. We'll get to the first tier in a sec, but that's where we need to be. And the fact of the matter is, you all need to recognize that you are the, at the epicenter of a demanding and exciting technology industry that will quickly be in the first tier of institutions. Never be Silicon Valley, we're never the next Silicon Valley, we're not Silicon Prairie, we're Silicon nothing. We're just a great technology center doing great things. Um, and a lot is happening. And I've been at this now nine years, I've been in Chicago nine years, um, and been in the technology industry for about 15. Uh, and I am more bullish today than I've ever been in my nine years in Chicago. We have such an opportunity happening right now, so many great things going on. The next 10 years is gonna be a tremendous ride every technology company out there if we're smart and we activate and we produce and go and move things forward. So who is so so who are we in terms of building our technology? So what I like to say is we're a B2B capital, right? And we produce technologies that are revolutionizing business to business activity. We are not cool, we're not sexy, right? I do not make uh, we're never gonna have a Facebook come out of Chicago, come out of Illinois. We're just not that hip, right? We're just not, we, you know, it's, it's hard when you're all layered up in the cold to be hit, right? But we have tremendous companies that are transforming the industries that are here in the state. And that's one thing that's great about Illinois, is that we have not just one industry. We're not Pittsburgh, where we once had only steel to fall back on. Or we're not Austin, where it's just semiconductors. Our technology industry is quite robust. Our, excuse me, our, our economy is quite robust. There is not one industry that dominates more than 13% of the GDP. So healthcare, manufacturing, logistics, real estate, uh, advertising, marketing, the list goes on, and I'll talk about those in a second. All of these industries are here in the state, and all of them are building a discrete technology industry around them, which is great for all of you, great for all of us. So B2B capital, focused on the future, building companies going forward. So who are some of those industries, right? So I say we have 20 different technology industries. We can talk about manufacturing, Caterpillar, John Deere, B2B2C, marketing, advertising, financial services. Who knows we have a huge fintech industry? Who knows that we have, that the entire electronic trading in the New York Stock Exchange is built by a company in Chicago? We have, they actually bought New York Stock Exchange in a reverse merger and made that happen. Clean energy is becoming a huge area for us. Invenergy is a wind power company, so core energy does solar power. We are rapidly becoming one of the destinations for clean energy, uh, and lots of things are happening there. Healthcare tech, travel tech, communications, we're at Motorola. GoGo, who uses the, who uses, uh, the Wi-Fi on a plane? Nobody, no one travels? <laughs> All based in a Chicago company, based not more than five miles from here, called GoGo. Um, real estate, lots going on, transportation, logistics. 
we're taking that history of, of transportation and logistics and being a hub uh, in terms of the physical movement of goods and adding on, on top of that a, a, a technology layer that uh, takes the domain expertise of moving those goods and makes it happen more rapidly and exceptionally. And the list goes on, right? So electronics, I named a few. Gaming, we're the largest producer of slot machines in the world. Anybody know that? Anybody work at WMF today? Anybody all know that, right? You're all gamers, right? You hang up horseshoe, I know you. Um, <laughs> retail, I talked about manufacturing. Consumer, tech services, business, here, large, one of the largest math producers in the world, a company called Here, used to be called Navtech. Consumer services, semiconductors, and the list just goes on. <coughs> the fact of the matter is, what's interesting about all this is that if you went to another technology center, uh, you wouldn't see that diversity. You see, you see them in a sector, so we're focused on semiconductor, we're focused on uh, business applications, we're focused on communication. What's interesting about our community is that we have this diversity of, of things happening, which is good and bad. From a good standpoint, you'll all be employed forever. You'll never not work, right, if you're any good. If you're not good, I can't help you. But if you're any good, you'll, you'll never not work. What's bad about it, though, is that um, it, it, sort of, it, tends to it tends to minimize who we are as a technology community. So for the most part, when you're for the most part, people think of the technology industry, they may only know one sector of the whole thing. And what really they need to know is that there's so much happening. Do you use the microphone? Okay. What's happening is that you need, in, in the industry, is that we need to, is that there is uh, a lot going on that you don't know about. So if you only look at one sector, you only know your sector, you think it's small. But the fact of the matter is there's lots happening. The challenge we have as a community, though, is we don't collaborate enough. So I'll give you an example. How many of you whose orbits have heard of book a train, uh, uh, plane ticket? So about five years ago, I was talking to the CTO of Orbits Corporation, and he said he just built this global platform to manage all the online properties they own, orbits and cheap tickets and all these things. And he said, oh, it was so hard to do because no one's ever built a, a platform that big to manage that many Currencies to manage that many transactions that fast in so many different languages, and no one's ever done it. We're the biggest travel company in the world, and ah, Chicago sucks because we didn't have any expertise to help it, help make it happen. I didn't say sucks, but he's, he was, you get it. And I literally looked across the river because I'm standing in, in, the, in, the, in the city building downtown. I pointed at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange and I said, Do you not think about talking to the CTO of the Merc? Because I'm pretty sure their platform does 10 times transactions per second that yours does. Uh, and has, has just as many currencies and just as, many, as much complexity. He looked at me and said, yeah, I didn't think about that. And that sort of gets the quintessential problem of one of the challenges we have in this community is when you're focused in your single area, you don't think about well, how, do I, how do I take what I'm doing or how do I learn from somebody who's not competitive to me but can provide expertise. They know our best buddies and lots of things happen. But for the most part, that's sort of a quintessential story of what's going on in Chicago. Uh, in Illinois, and so we need to do more as a community to change that. So what's going on? What's going on right now? As I said to you a, a few minutes ago, I think that today I'm, I'm more bullish than what's than ever any time I've ever been here in Chicago. And let me tell you, it was a desert ten years ago when we started. Right? There was not a lot happening. It was after the after the NFL. There was a lot, sort of lot, not a lot of activity going on. But now there's real things happening. It's not just the hype you hear. I'm sure you read the paper and you hear about some company that you look at and say, that's a simple idea. How are they worth billions of dollars? But the fact of the matter is, there's a real groundswell going on. There's real companies being built in all the sectors I saw that are going to transform their, transform uh, the industries they're involved in. And it's a pretty exciting time to be here. With strong ecosystem, we talked about collaboration. We still have some problems of collaboration. There's still sort of Lots of not connectivity, but we're trying to find more ways to connect those people. Lots of startup activity happening. So I mentioned 1871, I mentioned TechNexus, which is a place that I founded. Um, hundreds of startups being created every day. More, what's interesting now, though, is we've gotten over this for a while there, three or four years ago, we got really excited by apps. Right? Everybody in the country was talking about apps, which isn't the core of who Chicago is. Right? You guys build complex technical products, either software or electronic based that are doing amazing things. That's the core, that's the history 
of this state. And so what happens is we got all excited for those apps, and, but now there's no money to be made, it turns out. Uh, and so what's happened is we've turned back to our roots and said, and the companies that are being built today are much more complex. They reflect who we are as a community, they reflect who we are as an industry. And that's great for all of us because what it's doing is getting to the point where we have real companies do real revenue. So the startups they're seeing now are much more exciting than they were just two, three years ago. Talk about the growth stage companies, lots going on there. New funding. So one of the rubs on, tech, on the technology industry here in Illinois has been that we don't have any capital. And the numbers prove that, right? So California had 33 billion or some ungodly number, 30, 30, 33 billion dollars, 13 billion dollars in capital invested, venture capital last year. We had one, right? It's a huge ratio. But the fact of the matter is, in the state of Illinois, there's an ungodly amount of money. It's not like we're living in Cruz of Cleveland. <laughs> Sorry, there's not a lot of money. I think it's happening in Cleveland right now. I pick on Cleveland. I can pick on Dayton. If there's no one from Dayton. Pick on Dayton. There's not a lot of things going on in Dayton today. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, in Chicago, there's just tremendous money, tremendous activity. We have to sort of curve that money away from um, sort of the traditional things to get into tech, and that's happening. And you're seeing lots of money come from outside of Chicago into the community because they see you as tremendous demand experts, they see you as tremendous workers, they see tremendous things happening that they want to be a part of. Uh, and it's a different class for them, and they're excited by that. There's an awareness of companies going on here. There's lots of acquisitions happening. Um, we used to get excited five years ago. There was a story we tell about, oh, there's three or four companies got sold for $100 million. And how exciting was that? Well, I have two things to say about that. One is, I'm glad they got sold for $100 million, but I'd rather have them build themselves to a more role. It's a billion dollars in revenue. Now what's happening is most of the acquisitions that are occurring are over a billion dollars, major acquisitions. So, so that's a change here, because we're starting to build companies that have much more substantive revenue, much more exciting, much more exciting things. So a billion dollar in acquisitions will lead to $10 million companies that employ thousands of people that are exciting. My goal is to see, what my role is, two or three of these huge campuses built in, in Chicago land in the next 10 years, because companies got so big, employ so many people, and are doing so many amazing things. So beyond all of that, there's some exciting things happening that reflect the larger industry. And so let's talk about those for a second. The first is digital manufacturing. We all know that Chicago, we know that Illinois is one that has always been a traditionally a leading worldwide manufacturing hub. How many of you can turn to me and say, oh, it all went to China? Somebody will say that, right? But the fact of the matter is what's happening now is that the digital side of manufacturing is returning to the city. That companies that once went away because it was cheap labor are realizing they can be much more cost effective by using digital technology. 3D printers, things of this nature. And so we're taking the domain expertise that was built over 100 years of manufacturing here in the state of Illinois, and we're combining that with technology to become a leading digital manufacturing center. So you can, you can I, mark my words, Chicago will, have, will be a leader in digital manufacturing, and there'll be a renaissance in manufacturing as a major sector for us. And that's exciting for all of us. Big center of that is something called UI Labs. Uh, which was a grant, which was funded by a grant from the state, from the federal government of $70 million. They also attracted $300 million in corporate sponsorship, $300, $400 million to build a digital manufacturing hub on Goose Island uh, in downtown Chicago. This is going to have huge rewards for all of you. I expect that every single one of you will be there, will be doing something with them in the next five years. That, there's that much activity happening. But once again, playing to the expertise we have at the state, adding a technology layer and setting us up to be a leader in the future, not just here in the West, but nationally and globally. Big data. Chicago also has a tremendous history in the analysis, uh, the collection analysis of data. Started with, with sort of the commodity side, we went to FinTech, went over the consumer and marketing sides. Just tremendous amounts of data here in <coughs> Chicago and Illinois. Also plays with the fact that we have, we're a logistics hub for data as much as we are for trains and, and um, big trucks. So you see a litany of companies being built here that are around big data. And that are trying to aggregate data, add that analysis we've built over these last 30, 20, 30 years on top of it to really change and become the big data capital of the world. 
clean energy I talked about, there's a great organization in Chicago called the Clean Energy Trust, which was founded to make us a clean energy hub. <coughs> clean energy is one of those things that's still 10 to 15 years off, right? We know solar, we know wind, but what's next? And so they're focused on that and they've put together hundreds of companies and thousands of people to try and transform us to a clean energy hub. And we're doing a great job doing this. We're doing a great job becoming that. Vertical digitization. So I mentioned all the industries we have in the state of the world. Um, all of the industries we have need to change because the dynamics of their industry are changing. So, for example, uh, in the insurance space, there is a large insurance company in, in, in Illinois that, that insures 60 million automobiles. Huge cash cow for them, making billions of dollars uh, managing the automobile insurance for 60 million people. For the last two years, for the first time ever, the number of cars being insured in the nation has gone down. Baby boomers are selling, how many, how many two or three cars are selling one? Right, exactly, that's what it is, I say, right. Millennials aren't buying cars. Uber is transforming the way people tra tra transfer themselves. So they're looking at their entire, they're looking at losing huge amounts, not losing the profit, but using huge amounts of customers. And they're thinking, okay, I, what am I gonna do? I can sit back and just sort of milk the cow for as long as possible to buy cars. Or I can look and say, I have 60 million customers who want, who buy auto insurance. I mean, what else can I sell them? And they're thinking about technology as a way to reach into those customers, to sell them new products, and do interesting things. And that's just one example of a lot of industries here that we have that are trying to use technology to transform who their customers are and the services they offer. And that will continue. It's happening in healthcare, it's happening in logistics, it's happening in everything. And lastly, and probably most importantly, the biggest local trend I want to talk about is the Internet of Things. So, obviously an overhyped word right now. Everyone's talking about it. We're doing an Internet of Things summit in two, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. And everyone's talking about it as a next. But what's interesting about it from a Chicago perspective is that it combines a lot of elements that we have. It's the manufacturing side, building the devices that will make the Internet of Things possible whether it be that for your personal use, whether it be for your business, whatever. The contract, the manufacturers, the electronics people in Illinois are going to be the ones who are going to lead that revolution. No other place is primed to build that, to be the center of that. You take on top of that the data analysis that Wright just talked about and, how, and, where, and what can be added to that, to that in terms of the data that's coming out of those things. And you're really setting us up to be a true pioneer, a true leader of the Internet of Things. Oh, I forgot to add also the communication side, right? So communications, mobile communications, device communications. Was that invented right here in this spot on this building or if you're close to this? So we are set up as a community to be a leader in those things. So what do you need to do about it, right? So I started the conversation saying you're the most important people in the community right now, and you are. Absolutely no question. Don't think you are. Not that I want to blow smoke, but but you are the most important group in this community. We, need everything, we can do everything we can to support you. So you got to jump in, right? You guys all worked a lot of companies for a long time. How do you jump in? How do you how do you get involved with these big trends? How do we as a community help you understand where those opportunities are? You got to cross pollinate. So if you have tremendous expertise in communications technologies across devices. How does that play into, into, into small devices around Internet of Things and the communication in the retail space? You've got to attack problems you see and seek, and seek solutions. There's so much opportunity right now, so many great things that your minds could develop to come out with. We need you to do that. You need to recognize your value. Like as I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to blow smoke, but I think you guys are the future of what is the Illinois community and the Illinois economy. And I think that we can all lead us to do great things. So that's my thought. You are the future of Illinois technology. There's amazing things happening here. And I want to make sure that you have every resource to make that happen and recognize that we can't do it without you. So thank you. <laughs> I said I was full of it. Come on, somebody's got to think I'm full of it. <laughs> yes. That, that we developed technology based on uh, research that's done at Argonne, mm -hmm. Oak Ridge National Laboratory, to build the power plants. 
And so one of the concepts is, is that you can build a, power, uh, build a manufacturing plant to build one power plant per week. Mm -hmm. However, when I go to DECA, they gave me thumbs down. They're not interested in that type of technology. And so sometimes people classify uh, power plants that use the burn thorium and uranium as nuclear, and there's a moratorium in Illinois. Uh, it's a nationwide number, so yeah. The question is, is that uh, we're looking at maybe building a manufacturing plant similar to what uh, Boeing has in Washington State and now building one in South, uh, South Carolina. Is that something that Illinois would be interested in doing, or do I have to go to Canada or Mexico to do something? Good question. You bring up a lot of good points. Sir. One is, is sort of the, the dynamic between what I didn't talk about between academic institutions and the industry. And I'm the son of two academics, and I can tell you they're crazy. Uh, besides that, the fact of the matter is we need to do a better job of building, of connecting the industry and academia to, to drive true solutions. But the answer to your question is I don't know. I mean, we just changed our governor, and we're going to see what happens, right? The technology industry, the support of the governor at this point, which isn't me, I'm the industry, has been spotty, has been good, but not fully robust to the point where I think it could be. If that truly is a thing that we should be doing, then we need to really recognize that. And I think we'll see the new administration looking at things from a very different perspective. And hopefully, we'll see what happens. You're talking about that most rapid the amount of I like that number. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that is a good question, right? So I think from a standpoint of big data and clean energy being related, clean energy and, and the influence of clean energy, a lot of that is dependent on making sure that you're doing the right thing. And so you do that by pulling out good data, by pulling out big data and look at the data that's coming through and making adjustments on the fly. And so you'll see both from a standpoint of new technologies being built, like wind and other things that will use the data to maximize their potential of those windmills, but also from the standpoint of using data to influence old technology. So if we can map, if we could use big data to understand the output of fly ash from a coal old coal fire plant, we can make changes to make a, a much more clean uh, clean power plant. But it'll take time to implement those, and make things happen. But certainly, it's coming down the pipe. I have a question. How are the uh, the power So that's a great question. Universities. How many of you are graduates of an Illinois university? Majority of you could. So I can see you. are the ones that are staying here, which is the way it used to be. We've had this problem lately is we've had a lot of outflow of, of, of engineers and CS students out of Illinois from the Illinois universities. But five years ago, we started a process where we tried to change that. We've had some success in actually bringing 50 of the top CS students to Chicago tomorrow. Uh, and so the university finally recognized that for them to really be active count part participants, really be doing the things that need to be done, really keeping their students here in the state, because let's be clear, universities are based on, on donation, a lot of it's based on donations, and if you move to California, you're not as easy to get money out of it as if you're living in, if you're living in Schoenberg. So they want to keep students here as much as possible. So we built a robust relationship with, with almost every Illinois, major Illinois university, they see us as the industry in a way that we can drive things forward. And they're trying to find solutions uh, to, um, to both teach their students effectively, but also to build for the future. And if any company wants to talk to any university, they would love to talk to you. They just don't have the time to, to get to everybody out there. So if you want to talk to, you want to, talk to the University of Illinois, you want to talk to IET, let me know and I will connect you to them because they'd love to talk to you. Other questions? Yeah. Just real quick, you didn't mention biomedical in your list. Is there a reason why there are some opportunities in the state? There is opportunities, it's just not my expertise, to be honest. So as I started out saying, I, I'm not more on the ICT side than I'm on the biomedical, but I think there are opportunities there for us to do some things. And certainly the confluence of data, tech, technology, and bio. That's it? That's too much talk, not enough talk this morning? All right, well, I'm excessive. Oh, we've got more over here. When you talk about manufacturing, what, what um, aspects of the manufacturing are I think it's all, right? I think we, we had it, we, we did it all for a long time, right? Yeah. 
We then sought, we, we did the actual, manu cut a lot of the actual manufacturing, shipped it out, design work remained here. Now we're seeing that, that work come back, right? Because you don't need to build as big a power plant, a big a manufacturing plant, you can build a smaller, more nimble one and change it on the fly and that allows the cost to be more effective so they're coming back here. The actual manufacturing yeah. product. Yeah, absolutely. So if you talk to the leading edge manufacturing firms, they'll say we shipped it all to China or wherever, Mexico, whatever, and now we're bringing it back because we can be much more cost effective here doing it here. Well, thank you all for your time. Oh, wait, one more. I'm available at any time. You guys have my email address there. I'm happy to answer questions, happy to be connected at any time. Thank you for your time. Talk about the industry. And once again, you are rock stars. Do not forget it. Thank you. Thank you.